Good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. I hope you all have been blessed. Hey, I hope you were blessed by last week's message on dreams. Uh, we're getting ready to carry you a little bit further in the subject of dreams, what it means, what God is trying to do, the imagery that God uses when he gives you dreams, how he works to help you understand it. A lot of people have been telling me lately they're getting dreams. That's why I went back to do this series again. There were a lot of people that missed it that were not here. So so this is really going to bless you. Take time, listen to it, hear your heart. Some of you are going to go back and remember dreams that you had, and it's going to become clear to you what God was saying. I love you. Enjoy the message. I'll see you at halftime. All right, let's get ready now to go into tonight's message, and that is on the subject of dreams. Job 33, 14 through 16, and verse 29 is our key passage of Scripture. And it says, for God speaks again and again. In other words, he's talking to us, but we're not listening. Some of us on the cell phone, some of us on the computer, on the iPad, at the mall, at the shopping center, uh, on the phone, or whatever. And he's trying to speak, but we're not always tuned in to his voice. For God speaks again and again though people do not recognize it. Next verse. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. Verse 16. He whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. And then look at verse 29. Verse 29. Yes, God does these things again and again for people. So God is saying, if I can't get their attention daily, if I can't get their attention regularly, when they can't hear the little small whisper of the voice in their spirit, I'm going to try to get to them whatever way I can. And if I have to speak to them and give them instructions, I would do it in a dream. Numbers 12, verse 6, gives us another revelation aspect about dreams. Numbers 12 in verse 6, New King James Version. Then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. So as I mentioned to you once before, that one of the signs of a call to a prophet's office is you get um, multiple dreams. You get dreams and visions on a regular basis. God speaks. So God is saying, I speak. I will speak to you in dreams. So that's why dreams are very important. And let me give you the definition of dreams as I gave you the last time. A dream is a series of thoughts, images, pictures, or symbols occurring in a person's mind during sleep. So while you're asleep, You'll get images, symbols, or you'll get pictures in your mind while you sleep. When God is speaking, he is trying to find a way to give you instruction, to give you direction, or to give you warning. Dreams are spiritual because they're going to let you know things that are going on in the present as well as what could happen in the future. Sometimes, as I'm going to show you later on tonight if I have time, sometimes God will even reveal problems that came from your past to let you know that issue is still a problem and you may have to deal with it. But it is going on in the spirit world. Your dreams are going on in the realm of the spirit. When you are asleep, when your body is asleep, your spirit continues to be alert. So therefore, when dreams are going on, your spirit is interacting in that dream world one way or the other. And I'm going to show you again the ways where that happens. So God uses dreams to reveal to you hidden mysteries about your life. All of us got things sometimes going on in our lives we don't understand. We don't understand why we got to go through this. We don't understand why we're suffering this. We don't understand the confusion that's going on in our lives. And it's emanating from somewhere, and we don't always know how. God will use dreams in order to take those hidden mysteries and open it up 
for you to get revelation and to interpret that. Uh, when there's a mystery and there is revelation through interpretation, then that mystery has been opened up to you. Now, God says, I'm going to get it to you whatever way I can. I want you to know and understand the mysteries of my kingdom. We used to say all the time, our God is a mysterious God. Uh, what was it? His ways are mysterious to us, and we don't understand God. That ain't the Bible, because God desires to show us his mysteries or the mysteries of his kingdom. Let me prove that out to you with several scriptures. In Job 12, in verse 22, you may want to write these scriptures down. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out of light the shadow of death. That was not the best one, but go to Matthew 13, 11. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. God says, I want you to know the things that are mysterious to you, that is not simple to you, that is hidden uh, uh, from you in terms of you understanding. I want you to know, but it is not given to them, meaning the world. He was showing how in this passage context that the world got to get stories, but to the believers, God can reveal those things to us by his spirit. Luke 8 verse 10 says this. You need to write every scripture down. And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in perils, that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. So God is saying, I got to give them, because they don't have spiritual sensitive ears, they don't have revelation knowledge, I got to give them some kind of story for them to understand what is going on and I will take things that they are familiar with and give them stories. That's what happens to us in our dreams. Your dreams are nothing but sleeping parables where God uses symbols, where God uses objects, or God uses imagery or pictures that you can relate to to help you to understand what is going on in the realm of the spirit. In Colossians 1:26. The Bible says, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. So because the Holy Ghost is in us, all the mysteries of God, as we become acquainted with, as we get understanding, as we go inside and begin to pull on and make a demand of God's Spirit, he will reveal the mysteries of which we need at whatever given time. So even in dreams, God is speaking to us in symbols. He's going to find things that you can relate to, that you understand, so that you will be able to have that truth revealed to you. Again, Jesus used parables. Go in the Bible. Every parable got some object, seed, Sower, farmer, fruit, the father's son, wheat, and the tares were pictures that Israel, when he was given the parables, as well as the world at that time, they could understand. He does the same thing in dreams. Now, what dreams do for you, again, is to give you a heads up on what's going on in and about your life. Here's some of the things that dreams can do for you. It can unlock confusing things about your life. It can show you things that's getting ready to come. I gave you the uh, testimony of Sister Perry this past Sunday. Uh, God had, had already begun to prepare her for what he wanted her to do and then allowed the boss to tell her to come and do the very exact same thing that he had already revealed to her probably a month before that time. So God will give you things to come. He will also give you things you need to pray about. He will reveal his plans and purposes to you. He will use it to prepare you for something, as I just said. What the devil is trying to do or where your problem is coming from, dreams have the ability 
to, to reveal that to you. What is the root cause of my problem? Because you got leaves and branches out here in the earth, but it's a root problem coming from somewhere, and that emanates from the spirit world to reveal to you where your problem could be coming from. Throughout Scripture, I was shocked when, until I had to go and just look up all these different situations where people, God used dreams to inform people, to warn people, to prepare people, to give them a revelation about their call and what he was getting ready to do. And it really begins to place a desire in you. I didn't care. I'm not really a dreamer. Uh, I have dreams to come every now and then, but I'm not a dreamer uh, where I have frequent dreams. But as I began to get into this and understand it even more, study it out uh, over the last couple of months, um, it has really opened my understanding until where I have gone to God and said, I want you to give me more dreams. I want you to reveal things more and more to me that I need to know. Now, let me give you one. I went through several scriptures the last time, but there is a pretty lengthy one that I'm going to show you. If you know anything about your Bible, uh, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar. He was not a godly king, Babylonian king. So that means he represented uh, the ungodly or the world at that particular time. Joshua, not Joshua, but Daniel had to come in and reveal the dream to the king. Nobody else could reveal it. And there's a few things in this story that you need to pick up. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 through 48, New Living Translation. I'm going to read the whole passage. This is one whole chapter, so hang with me. One night during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. Next message. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers. These are the witchcraft folk. These are the psychic folk. These are the palm reading folk that you go to today. They were doing the same thing back then. And he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed as they stood before the king. He said, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me, and I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king of Aramic, long live the king, tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this, if you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dream and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. They said again, please, your majesty, tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. The king replied, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for time because you know I'm serious when I say if you don't tell me the dream, you are doomed. So you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I would change my mind. But tell me the dream, and then I'll know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers replied to the king, No one on earth can tell the king his dream, and no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they do not live here among people. Wrong gods then. Our God does. The king was furious when he heard this, and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed, all these demonic, idolatrous folk. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arach, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Then Daniel went home, told his friends, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, really 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What had happened? Next. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a dream. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. God gave him the answer in his dream. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. See, they were relying on the wrong God or the wrong spirits, and they didn't have revelation. Only the God of heaven who sends a God dream can give the interpretation of the dream to his people. That ought to let you know going to a psychic, going to a palm reader is a waste of time and money because all they're going to do is give you a lie. If you've ever gone to that, all you got was a lie. Remember that because it's another spirit that is in operation. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God, of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You told me what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. God to mighty. Then Daniel went in to see Arioch whom the king had ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to him, don't kill the wise men. Take me to the king and I will tell him the meaning of his dream. Arioch quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives from Judah who will tell the king the meaning of his dream. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belshazzar, is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? Daniel replied, there are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. They don't have the code. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and who has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. He who reveals secrets has shown you what is going to happen. God Almighty. it. And it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wants you to understand what was in your heart. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron. Its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain. Notice, we see the statue, the silver, the bronze, images and colors that God has given. A rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away with a, without a trace, like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was the dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Now he can interpret the dream. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world and has put even the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise to take your place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth 
one, as strong as iron, that kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay showing that this kingdom will be divided. Like iron mixed with clay, it will have some of the strength of iron. But while some parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms he's showing him was getting ready to come in the future that has outlived Nebuchadnezzar. He didn't get to see all this. Some of this is happening in our world today. So God was giving him future events of different kingdoms that was going to come over the centuries and over the millenniums. And many of it is happening right now. If I get into all that and explain each item, we won't be able to deal with the rest of the story on dreams or the message on dreams. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms would try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage. But they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. He's taking every item of the dream and interpreting it to the king to let him know what was going on. Stay with me. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain, though not by human hands that crushed to pieces the statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold, the great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true, and its meaning is certain. Now watch what happened. Then King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before Daniel and worshiped him, and he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burnt sweet incense before him. He knew he had come in contact with the real God. The king said to Daniel, truly your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. The king said, then the king appointed Daniel, watch this, because he revealed what the king could not know on his own. The king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon as well as chief over all his wise men. Is that it? That's it. Because he revealed the dream, he got promoted. I just believe some of y'all in here going to help some of y'all's bosses. They ain't going to know what to do to turn their jobs around, to make their businesses work. And you're going to give them either a prophetic word or a dream that's going to turn situations around and they're going to know that you know God because only God could have given you the secret or the mystery of their dream. Give God some praise. <laughs> Pilate's wife who killed Jesus or had him crucified had a dream in Matthew 27, 19. Some of y'all, you've done your Sunday school before you ought to know this story. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. She was trying to warn him. Don't do nothing to hurt him. She was trying to warn him at that particular time. And I want to say something to men. You got to watch your ego because sometimes God gives you spiritual women that have spiritual insight that can pick up stuff that you can't pick up. I thank God for my godly woman who when I'm busy or when I'm not picking up or I don't have the sensitivity, God will give stuff to her. In my early days, I had that ego thing, oh, I'm the man, I'm God, and if he ain't told me, you know, then and I, he, he don't want me to know it. I had that kind of attitude. But man, after I started seeing stuff she was saying was beginning to come to pass, I started listening a whole lot more. God, it's something about women that he gives them a super sensitivity in a way that he does not give men. Listen to your wives, especially if you got a godly woman. 
Now, if you got an ungodly woman, that's another ball game. But if you got a godly woman and you know she's a praying woman and a believing woman and a faithful woman, you need to open your ears because God can speak to you when you're not picking it up. Amen, somebody. In Matthew 2, verse 12, Matthew 2, verse 12, watch this. I'm still laying foundation. Matthew 2, verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream, God will warn in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed for their own country another way. So God was warning them not to go back to Herod, and so they told him to go in another direction by giving them a dream. Joseph, man, I can imagine what Joseph went through in Matthew 1, verse 20 through verse 24. Here his wife is, he ain't had nothing to do with her. He has not laid with her, and she comes up pregnant. Watch how God got the message to him to get him to accept it. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is not another man, bro. You ain't got to worry about it. It's of the Holy Spirit. Next verse. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Notice, God has given instruction. He has given warning. He's given instruction. He's given him coming events. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Verse 24, then Joseph being aroused from sleep. So watch, all of what you just saw previously, he was asleep. He was getting it in his sleep. His body was not conscious. Now he's woken up. Then Joseph being aroused from sleep did as the angel of the Lord commanded or instructed him and took him to his wife. So God will give you warnings, and he will give you instructions in your dreams. Now, let me go back over these three sources of a dream. I'm going in detail tonight. You probably want to write this. And that is the three sources. Where do your dreams come from? Because there are three different sources that they can potentially come from. I gave you these last week, but I'm going to go in a little detail tonight so you can know how to recognize it. <clears throat> Number one. The first source, dreams that come from God himself. Dreams that come from God. Now, when God is speaking in a dream, this is what you're going to sense, and this is what you're going to pick up to know that it's from God. This is how you know God's voice and can discern it from the devil or your own voice. God is going to deal with righteousness, so put down righteousness, God is going to deal with that which is loving or has something to do with love. When God speaks, he's going to lead you toward Christ and salvation in your dreams or when he speaks to you. It's going to involve mercy. So let me go over it. Righteousness, loving or love. God's going to be leading you to salvation. He's going to involve his mercy in some kind of way toward you. Next thing, it will be without condemnation or guilt. When God is talking to you, it will not be about no condemnation where he's condemning you. He never condemns. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So he does not come to condemn you. So there will not be any condemnation in his voice when he's speaking or when he's speaking to you in a dream. He will always give you truth that agrees with Scripture. Whatever you are getting, if it's God, it's going to be in line with the Word. If it's not in line with the Word, it ain't God. But if it's in line with God's Word, if it's truth, it's going to agree with Scripture. Next thing, it's going to give life to you, not death. 
It's going to give you life. You're going to sense life. And when you got life, there's a joy. There's peace. There's righteousness. Also, when God is speaking, he'll give you his plans, his purposes, or his calling for your life. God will give you plans, purposes, and even calling for your life. You will hear humility. You won't hear nothing haughty or prideful, but it will be an humble spirit that you will begin to pick up. The Spirit of God is about humility. Next thing, you will sense peace. If you don't sense peace in your dreams, it's not God. You will sense peace. So let me go over that again. If God is speaking, whether he's speaking to you through your dreams or just speaking to you, period, it's going to always deal with righteousness, love. It'll lead you to salvation. It will involve his mercy. It will be without condemnation. Whatever he gives you is going to always be truth that agrees with Scripture. It will be life-giving. It will talk of God's plans, purposes, and calling. As I go back to the dream on this past Sunday, God was giving his plan and purpose to her for what she was supposed to do on her job. You will hear humility coming from God, not pride. And then you will sense peace. You know it's God speaking when there's a peace. If you leave hearing from God and you are confused, it is not God. Because God is not the author of confusion. That's how you know when Satan is always operating. He operates in confusion. Second thing, dreams from your own soul or your flesh. If you are getting stuff from your own soul or from your flesh, some things can come out of your subconscious. Because I've had that to happen before. I've gone to bed and something was on my mind or I was worried about something or thinking about something and it was so much into me until it got in that subconscious and when I sleep, went to sleep, something that was in my subconscious began to come up in a dream. It was just coming from out of me. It wasn't necessarily God, wasn't necessarily the devil. Let me give you an example. If a person is experiencing depression or grief, then you may have a dream that will reflect that state of mind. So you've been depressed, you grieving. I've heard people when I have done funerals and talked to family members and when the death happened, they went to sleep, and the next day, they, they, they started thinking about that person so much until that person began to come up or how life was going to be without them. They started having that kind of dream based on the state of mind that they were in, okay? Chemical dreams, and that is as a result of certain kinds of medication. You can take certain kind of medication if you're not careful, it can cause things to take place in your subconscious. When I was in the hospital back here two years ago, um, once I came and became conscious again, I don't know, it was like a night or two, the, the room looked like it was moving. It's like the bed. One time I was in the bed, I thought I was going to hit the wall. I don't know what medicine they had me on or what. But it was so, it was just, it's like I was just spinning in the room. I was conscious and my eyes were open, but it looked like I was just spinning around. In the, and then all of a sudden, I started seeing a bunch of folk that were in a back alley. They all had bats and sticks and chains, and they were just fighting each other. And I'm going, where is this coming from? And I couldn't explain it. But all I know was the bed was reeling and rocking, and I heard folk fighting. I don't know where it came from, but it, it was like evidently some kind of medication they may have had me on, or they were trying to bring me back, and it took a time for the medicine to wear off or something. But man, that was the weirdest dream I've ever had in my life. Next thing that happened in the, in your, in the area of your self or your flesh is soulish dreams. Now, stay with me. Soulish dreams. 
And usually you got certain needs and desires that's down in your soul that will come out sometime in your dreams, but it's in the soul. It's not from God. It's not of the Spirit. It's out of your selfish flesh that those needs and desires will come out. It sometimes may be areas that need to be cleansed in your life as well, that God would be trying to use that to show you something about you, show you things about yourself that's in you. That will come up sometimes out of your soul. Next thing, always remember this, and I'm going to get to the third one in just a moment, but many of us have dreams out of the soul and not necessarily from God. And you're going to find the closer you get to God, the more intimate you get with God, the more you build up your spirit, the less you will have dreams coming out of your soul because now you are conforming yourself to the image of Christ. And now your spirit man is being built up and you start beginning to have more dreams from God instead of out of your selfish flesh. Here's something else to let you know when the voice of flesh is in operation. When you start having dreams that is about self-seeking, write that down, self-seeking. You are seeking things for yourself. It's about yourself. It's about promoting your own personal agenda. It's about exalting yourself. Beware of dreams that are, is exalting yourself. I never forget a woman called. She left a message uh, on voicemail. This is years ago. She was a member of the church, but she wasn't faithful. She came off and on. And I remember the dream information that she gave. She said, Pastor, I dreamed that I was preaching in front of thousands of people. And pastor, you picked me to assist you and you promoted me second to you. Now, she saw thousands of folk, but couldn't even be faithful in church to just five folk. And she saw me picking her over and above everybody else. That was her trying to manipulate me to promote her to somebody telling me she got some kind of dream for God. But I can recognize when it's about self and I can recognize when it's about God. So be careful when you get dreams that's about promoting you. There ain't no way she gonna be getting something from God that's promoting her and she barely came to church. She wasn't faithful, she didn't give nothing, barely came, but all of a sudden, God been showing her she finna preach in front of 10,000 folks. And the last thing I heard about it, she ain't going to church nowhere right now because she never proved herself to be faithful. I'm not saying that God can't give you a dream like that, but I knew where her soul was and, and it, she was into her flesh and into herself and she was trying to promote herself and then trying to manipulate me into it by telling me God gave her this big dream. Now she's looking for me to come and promote her. So you, when you're known as the flesh, when it's about promoting you, be careful of that. Sometimes you got to discern. I'm not saying that God can't show you some things that he's going to do in your life. I'm not saying that. But you can tell when it's all about self. Pastor picked me. Pastor promoted me. All these folk I got in church, pastor picked me. I saw me preaching to 10,000 folk, and I was trying back then to get her to oversee a group she wouldn't even be over five folk in a group. But she can see herself preaching to 10,000 folk. So be careful of that. Also, flesh will bring up things that's full of insecurities. Your insecurities can come through you sometimes in a dream. I want to teach you to learn how to take every dream seriously so that you can go to God and ask him to give you discernment to understand its purpose. I don't care if it's coming from God, from the devil, from your flesh. Ask God, because sometimes even out of the flesh, it can tell you when something ain't right on the inside. 
So you want to always bring things up and ask God to show you. Hope you have enjoyed the message thus far. God bless you. If you desire to be a blessing to Wednesday night, uh, we do offerings on Wednesday night. You know what to do to go online to be able to do that. But I pray that you continue to watch this message because it's really going to say something to you and give you further revelation about what is God trying to do. I'm telling you, it was dreams that I had years back. Didn't know what it meant. But after I studied and hashed it out, I was able to understand what God was trying to say. Some of you are going to be able to interpret uh, what the dream is. Others, you may have to pray and ask God a little bit to tell you about it. But I hope you're blessed. If you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior after this message, or you can go do it now. Uh, go online to our um, Womb C Online Church. And you can see the invitation and the prayer and then go and respond to that or send in a request for prayer. We'll have somebody call you back. I love you much. Don't forget the rest of the year we are off from any live services. We will come back on January the 3rd. Appreciate you. Talk with you later. Now the third one. This is the one that a whole lot of people deal with. And that is dreams from the demonic realm or from Satan. Satan, of course, rules the demons, so whatever the demons are getting is coming from Satan. So it's the same thing. When your dream is very dark in, your, in mood, when you're picking up in your dream that there is something dark, the mood of the dream is dark, there's a dark tone, there is something that is depressing, you sense darkness, you sense a gray cloud, or you sense some kind of sick shade of green like color, dark clouds. When there's dreams of fear or panic, when you have those kind of dreams, you wake up in a hot sweat after you had a nightmare. Nightmares come into this category. Dreams of fear, dreams of panic. What you got to learn to do when you get those kind of dreams, you got to learn how, as I taught you the last time, you got to learn how to rebuke it and then invite God's presence to come in. You got to teach your children how to do that because Satan will come to your children at night to get a hold of them early. And you got to teach them how they need to learn how to get up and take authority when they have wrong dreams. I remember as a little kid, about six years old, um, uh, the bedroom that I was in in the house was kind of in the middle of the house. My mom and dad, we had a hallway. They were in the front room, and there was a den on the other side of my room. And there was a doorway that led from my bedroom into the den. And it, the den was always dark. And I could see a figure at night just come in and poke his head in and poke it back out. Poke it back in. He would poke it in, and he would have a little sinister smile on his face, and he'd go back out. He'd come in, and he'd go back out. I was so scared, I put that cover over my head. My feet were shaking. That's the only way I would take, I would not take that cover off my head. I still remember that now. I was about six years old. Spirits will come on children at night. Pay attention to what they tell you that they see. Pay attention to the dreams and stuff they have and then teach them how to take their authority and rebuke whenever they see anything evil or wrong. Next thing, when you're getting something from the devil, there will be dreams dealing with deceiving you, dreams of deception, images, impressions, or thoughts in your minds. Watch, that's designed to turn you away from God's truth. When Satan is operating in your dreams, he's going to try to do things to turn you away from truth. Remember that. Remember the other week, I told you about the young lady who gave the testimony about her mother. And she saw her mother in a dream. She was getting ready to pay her tithes, and her mother tried to stop her from paying the tithes. That was trying to get her out of God's way and turn from his way of giving and tithing. And she said, and it wasn't my mama, because my mama was not like that. She would have given and would have wanted me to give. But that was a familiar spirit that showed up. I'm going to talk about that in just, in just a moment. 
But when Satan comes or demons come in your dreams, they are going to try to turn you into error or turn you to darkness. And they will attack things like God's doctrine, like her with the tithe. They will attack your beliefs, your finances, your relationships, your career, your choices, your character, and your identity. They will attack those areas in your life. They will bring dreams of sin to you. They will bring stuff to you to try to get you to sin and to do wrong. Because if they can get you to enjoy it, find pleasure in it, and you show some agreement in the dream, that then opens the door for them to manifest that on your life. So pay attention to especially sexually oriented dreams that you get at night. That's the enemy trying to get you to participate and agree with it so he can bring that on your life. So you will have that. Whenever the voice of Satan is talking, whenever Satan is speaking in a dream, this is what you're going to hear and this is what you're going to feel. You're going to feel accusations against you. You know you did that. You know you don't love God. You know you've been out there turning against God. You know God don't love you. You know you're no good. You know you've done this and that. You know what you did four or five years ago. You'll sense accusations because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. You'll feel condemnation. You'll feel guilt when the devil is speaking. You will feel a twist. Sometimes the devil will come and just take God's word and twist it. He'll use it, but he'll turn around and twist it just a little bit in order to get you off. He'll lead you away from God's, should I say God's son or our savior. He'll lead you away from righteousness. He wants to bring death to you and destruction. He'll tell you, you're going to die. You're going to die. That's why you got to get up and you got to rebuke that. I will not die but I will live to declare the works of the Lord. You got to say something back. I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. He will bring fear to you. That's why you had them panic attack. You get up in a sweat and you're scared from a nightmare. That's Satan bringing you fear. So that's how you recognize all three levels of dreams or sources that come. I got to go back over this point from the last time. The purpose of dreams is to get you to act on those dreams or to agree with those dreams. In order for manifestation to come in the earth, there must be agreement first. God will come, tell you his plans and purposes. He needs your agreement. Just like with Joseph, Joseph agreed and went and did what he was instructed. Satan does the same thing. He comes in, puts something in your dream, and once you agree to it in that dream or do something that shows you are in covenant or in agreement or you accepting the dream he's giving you, that gives him the right to bring manifestation in your life. So that's why he sows seeds in your dreams. That's why he knows how to use your dreams because it's your spirit that's still interacting in the spirit realm. So when your spirit in that dream accepts what he brings or shows some kind of agreement, the devil now has the right to bring manifestation. Why? Because we have been given dominion. We have authority. So he got to get acceptance from us in order to get our authority to open the door for him to come in. That's why you're going to reject it in one or two ways. Remember this. I'm going back over the last time. That's why I'm laying foundation so you can understand what the purpose of dreams is. <laughs> when the devil comes, he will give you something to make you agree with it. And if you're in the dream, actually functioning in the dream, you either go agree to it in that dream or when you wake up, and you realize it's some evil, you need to take authority of it right away. If you know in the dream, um, let's say the devil gave you some kind of bag 
and you took the bag, and the bag, I'm going to give you this example in a few minutes too, but the bag had something wrong in it. Your taking of that bag and receiving that bag is an act of agreement. Now, like the young lady the other week with the tithe, when her mother, who she thought was her mother, was actual familiar spirit, tried to stop her from giving, she told her, no, in the dream, I am going to give. So she did not agree with that familiar spirit. See, listen, Satan sends a familiar spirit that looks like your kinfolk because he knows you're going to trust your kinfolk before you will anybody else. Now, had she not been built up in her spirit about giving and she chose to agree with her mother, to in, or, or that familiar spirit that looked like her mother, has she agreed with that? Then the devil said, okay, I got her agreement. She actually believes that's her mother. Now I can bring a spirit of poverty or lack on her. That's how important your dreams are. So the more built up in your spirit you are, when you do have those bad dreams to come and the devil is looking for agreement, you're going to be ready. In the event you have agreed with some things in your dreams before and you did not know what I'm teaching you now, the key is go back and just renounce whatever act or participation or agreement that you made in that dream that renounces it. Because if not, Let's say you did something in a dream and you agreed in some kind of way with the devil and maybe nothing has happened now, but that thing, because you agree with it, is pending in the spirit realm. It's out there. You made a covenant. You made an agreement. And it's hanging out there. And until you go back and renounce that thing in that dream, that thing is still pending over you until one day it comes and it manifests itself in the earth. Dreams want agreement so manifestation can come to you in the earth. That's the key thing about these dreams. If you don't get nothing else I teach, that's the key thing about dreams. And I'm going to share it with you a little bit further if I don't get to do it tonight at another time. But remember, your spirit man is always alert. It does not go to sleep. So it is interacting in those dreams in most cases. Your spirit, that's what's going on. Let me prove this to you. Uh, I gave you this the other time. We were here in this Genesis 20, verse 3 through 8 in the New Living Translation about King Abimelech. And Abraham went down there and he had his wife and the king thought Abraham's wife was pretty and to save himself, he lied and said, well, she's not my wife, she's my sister. But in Genesis 20, put it up right quick, verse 3 through verse 8 in the New Living Translation. Watch this. I'm fixing to show you how the king is asleep, but he is interacting some kind of way because you see him talking to God. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, so that means he's asleep, and said to him, behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not slept with her yet. So he said, so that means if he sleep, and this is a dream, his spirit must be the one talking. But Abimelech had not slept with her yet. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister? And she herself said, she, he is my brother. I acted in complete innocence. My hands are clean. In the dream, God responded, yes, I know you're innocent. That's why I kept you from sinning against me and why I did not let you touch her. Now return the woman to her husband, and he will pray for you, for he is a prophet. Then you will live. But if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and all your people will die. All this is going on in the dream. So him and God are conversing. His spirit man is the one that still woke. Next scripture, watch. Is that it? Verse, yeah. Abimelech got up early. So now he's waking up. He got up early the next morning and quickly called all his servants together when he told them what had happened. His men were terrified. So he went and made sure Abraham got his wife back. 
He received that instruction. He got that warning in his spirit. His spirit and God were conversing, but his body was asleep. So the point I'm trying to make is dreams are spiritual and you are being interacted with your spirit man when you're in dreams. Here are three biblical types of spiritual dreams. Three biblical types of spiritual dreams. These are the classifications of the dreams that you're going to get spiritually. Number one, a simple message dream. Simple message dream. Simple message. All right, Abimelech, give Sarah back to his husband, to her husband. Simple. No interpretation needed. Just a simple message. No interpretation. Don't need nobody interpreted. God told Joseph, that, 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 that child that's in Mary is a holy seed from the Holy Ghost. Don't be scared to take her as your wife. Simple message. Second category is what we call simple symbolic dreams. Simple symbolic dreams. Meaning they are dreams that you have that are filled with symbols. Bread, a house, a rainbow, a field, or crop. Filled with symbols, simple symbols. When Joseph gave his dream, he talked about the wheat shears that he, he would spend time out in the field. So God gave him what he was familiar with. Then he had a second dream where he talked about the sun and the moon and the stars would bow down to him. God used simple symbols that he could relate to. Third one is called complex symbolic dreams, as I just gave you about Nebuchadnezzar. So just put Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 2. That was complex. The silver, the gold, the brass and the stone and the rock hewed out of the mountain and, and the rock crushing the feet of the statue and all. That's real complex. But sometimes God will give complex symbolic dreams where you may need someone to interpret. You may have to find somebody. There ain't a whole lot of folk around that know how to interpret dreams. If you can't find nobody, you then go to God and say, God, begin to awaken my understanding and my discernment and help me to understand what you're saying. Sometimes you get a complex dream like that and you can't forget it and you know God is saying something, it'll draw you closer to God and that's what he wants is intimacy anyway. It'll draw you closer because you want to know what that means. You know it's something in there, but I want to know what it means. So the three types of spiritual dreams that you get are the kind that give you just a simple message. Then the second kind is just simple, symbolic dreams, just objects and things that you're familiar with. And then the other one is more complex, where you need more than likely an interpreter. And Nebuchadnezzar was a complex dream, man. There was so much in that. He had to have divine supernatural revelation from somebody godly to help him understand. Now, what should you do to understand your dreams? What should you do to understand your dreams? You're getting dreams. What do I do? Well, I've had dreams that I still remember to this day. What do I do with them? Number one, as I said earlier, ask God to give you understanding, discernment, and revelation. Ask God to give you understanding discernment and revelation. Sometime it would be good, number two, to go study the parables of Jesus. Study the parables of Jesus because there will be objects and there will be lessons and there will be images and things of that nature that will be in parables that sometime will show up in your dreams. Third thing, Study the dreams of people in the Bible as I've been giving you the last two weeks. That will give you a flow so you will know how to be familiar with how God comes. Study those dreams. 
as I have recently to prepare for you. Study those dreams. It'll give you a flow for how God moves so you can begin to recognize it. And then lastly, this is very key. Ask God to give you understanding of your own personal dream language. Your own personal dream language. Everybody in here is different. And we discern God differently. God knows how to speak to each of us. He may speak to some by giving you some words where you hear something. He may give you objects. Uh, he may give you simple messages. There may be certain objects you see a lot in your dreams. God knows each one of us and how to best give us our dream language. One member over here would tell you, I see apples and fruits a lot. Another person over here would tell you that I see, uh, um, see cornfields or I see uh, barley loaves of bread in my dreams quite a bit. So everybody has a personal dream language. Let me review those four. Ask God to give you understanding. When you wake up and you don't know, God, show me what you're saying to me. Reveal that to me. You may go to sleep the next night and it may be clearer. Or God may let you read something and say, I saw that in my dream last night. That's what that meant. He will have a way to give you the understanding. Study Jesus' parables because they are nothing but symbols of dreams that were done in parable form. The next thing is study the people in the Bible that had dreams and then ask God to show you your own personal dream language. How does he talk to you in dreams? And you'll see a pattern. If you dream a lot, you'll see a pattern of things that come up quite frequently in your dreams. Now, I'm going back to where I left off at the last time. I'm almost through. I got two or three quick points. Give me a minute. We out of here. Number one, whenever you dream about the dead, it is never going to come out good. And I'm going to tell you why in a moment. Any kind of dreams about the dead are usually not going to be good. Now, I don't want to bust nobody's bubble because I know if you have a loved one that you love dearly and they have come to you in a dream or something like that, that means a lot to you. It says a lot to you and it may be comforting sometime, but here's the reason why you can't take a lot of stock in it. Number one in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, in the New Living Translation, it says this, but I am not surprised even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Another pastor says he has the ability to transform himself like somebody or something good. So Satan can come in and look real good and he can be in the image or in the person or be fashioned in the image of somebody else. So therefore, familiar spirits can transform themselves to look like human beings, particularly family members that's familiar with you or that you are familiar with. That's why they're called familiar spirits. Second verse, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5 through 6 in the King James Version. Watch this. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten, meaning they, we've lost, they've lost memory of anything down here in this earth. Next verse will prove that. Watch. Also their love, their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So anything done under the sun is in the earth. So God is saying, if your relatives have died, they can never come back. He's also saying whatever earthly love they had, whatever kind of hatred they had, whatever kind of envy or any earthly emotions they had is now perished. 
Now, that can give you a lot of peace because if you had a loved one to die and you all were not together, I've had people who have carried guilt for years because their loved one died and they didn't make it to the bedside before they died. And they were carrying that guilt for years that their mama was holding it against them, that they didn't get there in time. And they've been carrying that guilt. There are many people that live their lives through the dead, trying to honor what mama want, thinking that mama up there hearing, that mama know I'm down here going to school because she asked me to go, or I'm down here taking care of stuff because she asked me to, and mama don't even know what's going on up under the sun no more. And those old earthly feelings that they had, because they're in heaven, all that is gone now. So that means you ain't got to worry about whether or not mama and them mad at you or got, was upset at you at the time she died and all, all those old feelings are gone. Can it? Put that scripture back up. Keep it up there until I tell you to let it go. That last one says, watch, I want you to see it again. Verse 6, also their love, hatred, envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun, meaning they will never come back under the sun in the earth ever again. So that means if they showing up in your dreams, then who is that that's showing up? It's a familiar spirit that is showing. If you pass the room, and the rocking chair was rocking and creaking and all that. And then here, here we go. And ain't nobody but mama. That's mama. No, that ain't nothing. That's either a rat, a mouse, or it's the wind where the window is open. The dead do not come back. I heard all this mess. I preached the other, the other week when I talked about my brother's funeral message at Aretha Franklin. I heard folk out there talking about I know Aretha about to turn over in her grave. Aretha don't know nothing about what's going on down here anymore. The dead don't know. Now, I know that busts a lot of bubbles up here. Well, I'm sorry. Boom, it's busted. Because that's the word of God. And you can't change the word. They have, and a lot of folk are living their lives for the dead because they're trying to, trying to still please folk that don't even know what's going on down here no more. They, they, they trying to go, you know, uh, mama wanted me to go to school, and they think that if they go into school, and every day mama down is up there looking down, and she's pleased, and she happy and all that, and they, ain't, they don't even have no more portion of anything, and their memories of their feelings on this earth are all gone. Mama did that, said those things in the flesh, because that's how she understood it by being in the earth, but now up there with God, she got godly feelings now. She got the mind of God. She ain't thinking them old emotions that you had back down here in the earth. I hope I'm helping somebody. So they don't come back. So who is that coming to you, interacting with your spirit man, spiritually, when you see a dead loved one? It's a familiar spirit that has transformed himself to look like your dead loved one. I'm preaching up in here tonight. Now watch this. If a spirit of depression is trying to come on you, this is how he will use your dreams. You may have had a family member that died of depression um, and um, maybe they committed suicide and they show up in your dream. It's really a spirit of depression that's masquerading as your relative, trying to get you, oh, I'm so glad you came back to me. I missed you so much since you killed yourself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Agreement. You've embraced that spirit. He's deceiving you to make you think it's your dead loved one. And now because you agreed with it, the devil now tries to bring that depression spirit on you and carry it down to another generation. So the key is cancel the dreams that are wrong immediately. Whenever you get any kind of wrong dream, if you didn't do it in the interaction of the dream, 
then when you wake up, you immediately cancel it out and renounce it in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. I'm just about finished. Let me show you a way how you can interpret some of the things that you're getting. If you're getting some symbolic dreams and you see these symbols and you know you're familiar with them, uh, saw a mountain, uh, saw a car, or saw whatever. I'm going to give you an example of one that I heard about. Uh, there was a lady talked about that she was given a bag of thorns. She, she was given a bag by somebody in the dream. She opened the bag, and because she received it and opened the bag in the dream, inside the bag was thorns and thistles. Thorn, thorns and thistles that were in there. She put her hand there. It would stick her. Well, when she woke up, she went and got the Bible because she had remembered a scripture that talked about thorns and thistles, and it was in Genesis 3, 17 through 18. Watch. When man sinned, the Bible says that God cursed the ground, cursed the earth, and made it out of thorns and thistles. So thorns and thistles represent the curse. So what you do, you look at those objects that you are getting. Go to the Word of God to see if that symbolism is in there, and it could possibly tell you what God is trying to say to you in that dream. She realized that it was a curse. Since thorns and thistles symbolized the curse that God brought on the earth, she realized that that bag, opening that bag, was intended to bring a curse on her life. And when she opened it, she agreed to it. She had to rebuke it once it was over with. Now watch this. A lot of people tell me they see dreams where everything is black. <laughs> I done had a lot of folk over the years just tell me, you know, I just saw these folk coming to me and they all had on black. Pay attention to everything in a dream. Every object, every color, because all of them got a significant meaning to that dream. It's something in it God trying to show you. I saw an apple, and it was flying over the ocean. Pay attention to not only the apple, but that ocean got a meaning also. The clouds were just gray, or the clouds were just gloomy. Pay attention to the clouds. There's a message. So every color, every object, every person, every place, every animal that comes in your dream, there is significance of every last one of those objects of something God is trying to show you. Now watch. If you see the color black a whole lot, and as I told you, several members have told me, one recently told me she just, she was going into a doctor's office and she kept noticing women that had on all black and they had on black hats and their faces were covered in black and she couldn't see them. I could tell you right there, that's witchcraft. Those people, those are witches that are coming against them and the reason the face is covered is because they don't want you to know they are doing it to you. So they hide themselves. It may be a coworker, it could be a family member, somebody that's close to you that's keeping their face covered that don't want you to see who they are or what they are doing. But whenever you see black and darkness, whenever there's black, everybody is wearing black in the dream that you got, it symbolizes, watch, darkness. It symbolizes decay. It symbolizes evil. It symbolizes judgment. It symbolizes demonic presence. It symbolizes famine. All you got to do is go to the Word of God and look up the color black, and most of the time it is associated with something that is ungodly, judgment, or something that is demonic. Here are some scriptures. You write these down, go home and look at them, I won't go through them tonight because I need to close up. Leviticus 11, 13. Leviticus 11, 13. Deuteronomy 4, verse 11. Deuteronomy 4, verse 11. 
Deuteronomy 4, verse 11. The next one is Job 3, verse 5. Job 3, verse 5. Watch this. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. So blackness is associated with spiritual darkness. So when you get see somebody walking around in black, or you see a man, men in there, they got on black robes and capes, and their collars are tucked up, and they got a ma magician's hat on their head, Dracula done showed up in your dream. And Dracula wasn't nothing but a demonic spirit. That's all he was. See, all this stuff was back in the day, but they made it Hollywoodish, and we couldn't see it. There are things that happen when the moon becomes full. Go to the emergency room, and they'll tell you the biggest time they have most folk coming in at different times between 12 and 3, and especially when the moon is full. They were telling us that back in the day with Wolfman. Stuff happened during those times. They put a Wizard of Oz, all that mess was right in front of our faces and we couldn't recognize it because they packaged it where we couldn't see it. Bewitch twitching her nose, she was a witch. If you see black water surrounding you, you just see nothing but black water. Well, water has always been representative of the Holy Spirit or the moving of the Spirit. Well, if that water is black, then it's demonic spirits that's surrounding you. Oh, I'm preaching up in here. Somebody somewhere is practicing witchcraft against you. Bottom line is when you see darkness. If it's women, it's a witch. If it's men, they are warlocks or wizards. Yeah. I'll give you this last one. If you see a dream where you are being set back in a scene where the setting, rather, of the dream is you back at your growing up house, your mama's house, your grandparents' house, or some setting in the past, that means setback and delay. Because you done traveled that life. You have progressed from your parents' home. You grown, got your own place, and married. But you trying, in your dreams, you are seeing you back at grandmama's house or your parents' house. That's a sign of setback and delay. The devil is trying to set you back. Oh, I'm preaching in here tonight. He's trying to set you back. And so he's revealing delays and setbacks, repetitious failures, disappointments, places you in your past over and over again. That's delay trying to come on you, to set you back, to hinder you. Here's another one. If you keep going back to grandmama's house, maybe even your parents' house, or maybe even some ancestor's house, it could be that your, God is trying to show you that your problem and why you can't go forward is in that house. Maybe an ancestor, maybe a grandparent, maybe a parent got involved in witchcraft. It included you, and you can't go no further, and God is trying to use the dream to tell you, here's your problem right here. Go back and renounce what was done. Because you don't know what was done years or generations ago, but if it keeps coming up like that, God trying to tell you something. It's something in your past you need to deal with. So it can either mean setbacks or it can, and delays, or it can mean this is the source of your problem, why you can't go forward. Your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your great-granddaddy used witchcraft or they were involved in Freemasonry, or they were involved in the occult, and that's got a hold on your life. I rest my case tonight. We're going to pick this up the next time we come together. Y'all getting the thing out of this tonight? Let me know it so I can know to stay with it or get up off of it. Come on, let's cancel some dreams out. Stand up on your feet. I don't know what you done dream. I ain't got to know, but all you got to do is say what I'm going to tell you to say 
so you can know how to practice. Lift your hands up. I want you to open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Now open your mouth. I want to hear you. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. I renounce every ungodly dream, every satanic dream, every demonic dream, any place that I made agreement or I made a covenant, I renounce it right now. I pull it from the spirit realm. It is no longer pending in my life. No death, no setback, no delay, no disappointment, no depression, no spirit of poverty, no lack, no sickness, no death can come in my life in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord praise tonight. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. I defy the devil to have the people of God. I defy him tonight. I love you. See you Sunday, y'all.